Welcome back to the community, everybody, and thanks for being part of it. If you get a chance, slip down into the description. Donations are always really appreciated to help keep the channel going. And there's also t-shirts and stickers down there with links to them. Uh, today, what we're going to do is start wire wheeling and using rust bullet in the rear of the car underneath. I brought it up in our club meeting Sunday on uh, YouTube at the live chat and people said, yeah, you know, a lot of the guys said, just keep filming everything you're doing. So I try to keep it basically DIY, but I'm going to be using that Ospho phosphoric acid and also rust bullet. So I guess it is a DIY because we'll get to see how this stuff works. Uh, I wanted to bring up something, take me about 60 seconds. I wanted to thank Adam Gray. Uh, he sent me a couple t-shirts from the business. He's an electrician. He's the one that helped me get this garage wired up properly with more power. And here's, here's a picture of the t-shirt. I didn't want to wear it up the garage and end up getting it dirty. So if you're in North Carolina and you need a good, honest electrician, I'm not saying there aren't honest ones out there. He's a great guy and he's a member of our community. He actually met up uh, with Darren, another member of the community. This is becoming one big family now across the globe. This is amazing. Uh, they all have their shirts on with their sons. Here's a picture of them. And they met up at a VW show in Farmington, North Carolina. So anytime you're going to go to a VW event, try to wear your shirt. These guys are all seeing each other at events and going, oh, I'm part of the community too. We're creating a big family. This isn't about just me. This isn't about just this channel of DIYs. This has become a global community that's slowly building up, actually quicker than I thought it would. Uh, I did order new wireless mics. That's good news. Uh, Heather will start being in more films with me now. So she'll have her own microphone to wear just like I should have for Justin when we did the uh, Mexican bug interview. Uh, he didn't have a mic, only I did. So it'll help with two microphones, for you know, one for each person. And I'm still running on my crappy one until those arrive. Uh, so, okay, I had to give all that news out here. So we'll go ahead and get started on this and let's see what we can get done. Let's hop on it. Thing I did grab for winter time because it's starting to get cold here fast. I picked up a pretty big, I call it a furnace. I'm gonna hang from towards the top of the rafters pointed down so it heats the garage up nice uh, because I wanna do more filming this winter. Last winter, I kinda did, still did my weekly, but I was doing short videos because it was so cold. So thanks to Adam again, the guy, the electrician I talked about, this is a 220. He's gonna show me how to hook it up in my panel. So that is a huge help. I'm not an electrician, but I do know what I'm doing. So if you guys wanna, I don't know if any of you are hooking stuff up like this, I can do a short film on it. If not, I won't, cause I know it has nothing to do with this channel. So thanks again, Adam. Okay, what I decided to do, I'm gonna clean up all of this first, the engine compartment, and we're gonna go ahead and clean it. Use the uh, metal cleaner when I'm done and use the rust bullet and get this all done. I was gonna paint it the factory color that I'm gonna use. Well, I shouldn't say factory color, the cream color I'm gonna use, but I thought of something that's silly. I should rust bullet it uh, because tar board's gonna go over here, tar board's gonna go over here. So it's kind of stupid to do that. Uh, maybe in the end I should uh, paint these. Now they're all gonna be covered, okay. Uh, I'll go ahead and clean this all up. I'll do that in front of you. Uh, I know this is a shoddy film, but I got to get this stuff done. So I'll clean this up. We'll get this all rust bulleted and done, and we'll see how it goes on back here. We're going to get a lot of this glue and stuff pulled off of there. And then this coming week, I'll go ahead and get all underneath here. So let's get started. Okay, first, let's get this felt off of here. I'm going to run a a disc across this. I'll show you what I picked up from Harbor Freight to clean this all up. <coughs> Wear a dust mask. Okay. We're going to go ahead and take... Oh, I hate pulling this stuff off here. It's a pain. The uh, seal. 
I'm buying a new one, obviously. This one's all dry rotted. And it's not fun to get off sometimes. I'm just pulling it. I don't care if it tears, obviously. And there it comes. Because I want to get this channel all cleaned out. Just pull it right out. Good. It's still solid. Thank goodness. Because you want to wire wheel and clean this all up, straighten it out so that the new seal slides in easy. I actually got to order one, which is not a big deal. Uh, I'm going to show you what I got from Harbor Freight, and we're going to clean this all up first on the back part. Uh, we got to get the glue off, metal condition it, and rust bullet it. I got to get up in here too. Uh, the thing is too, what I'm going to try from Harbor Freight is something I never bought before, so we'll see how well it works. You know, I bought this at Harbor Freight. This one's 150 grit. I bought an 80 grit. It's a nylon abrasive wheel. I want to see how it works. I wasn't really worried about taking it down to metal, uh, but I want to get it cleaned up pretty well. If it does go down to metal, I don't care because we're using rust bullets. So let's try this. If it works, that's good. At least you know you can buy it then. Okay, I'm going to try not to get in your way. And we're going to try this out. I got the 80 grit and the 150. This is the 150. Something tells me for this here, I should have probably got uh, something a little like 220 or something. Okay, either way, if this goes to metal, I really don't care because I'm going to be using a metal conditioner spray on and then rust bullet and we'll seal this all up. By the end of this film clip, it should look pretty nice. So. Okay, get your dust mask on. As soon as the drill starts, I'll go ahead and speed it up moderately. And uh, I don't want to speed it up too fast and you get a misconception on how this works. But I'll put some music to it. Here we go. <laughs> Okay, uh, hopefully you can hear me with this mask on. From what I could tell, the 150 grit, it is pulling the glue down. If I stay in one spot for a little while, we do see metal. If I probably use the 80 grit, it would rip it down quicker. I'll try this for a few more seconds. If I'm not happy, I'll switch to the 80 grit. Okay, I want to try the 80 grit. I want to see what it does. Let me switch about. All right, let's try the 80 grit and see what that does. This is the nylon one. Same thing from Harbor Freight. not that impressed. I mean, it's fine. I can rust bullet over this because it's ripping the glue down, but somehow I thought 80 grit would really rip right into it. I really didn't want to use a wire wheel on this if I didn't have to. Let me try something here a minute. I thought this would uh, work a little better than that, but then again, you know. <laughs> Whatever you do, watch with these. These are extremely sharp. 
the wire wheel's cutting it down. I don't have to have this perfectly smooth. It's just I wanted to get the heavy stuff off, any loose stuff, and then we'll rust bullet over it. Uh, the more rust bullet we put in this car underneath and in the back, the better, you know. So I'm going to go ahead and bend this tab out and get all up through here. I'll speed the film up moderately, just so you're not misconcepted and think it only takes two seconds. We're going to clean all this up, and then we'll start the rust bullet, but we're going to straighten this track, and I'll bring the camera in close, because so you know what I mean. It's smooth. It may not look it, but it actually is. That's weird. I'll try to get up in here the best I can. That's not going to be easy. Uh, let me re-angle the camera. I'll get to the sides here. I just want to get the rust bullet on here. Is what I want to do. So let me re-angle. Got to watch the wiring here. I'll get up there with a the soft brush in the end. Now do yourself a favor with uh, where your seal goes in, okay, the molding. When you see that, sometimes basically people will tap it in a little to pinch the seal so it don't move. Go around and straighten that out, okay. Sometimes, to be honest with you, I bend it out like that right there. And that way I can slide the seal through and then I can go through and just tap the trim back up in to hold it tight because if not you're going to be fighting with it you know what I mean so we're going to wipe this down up in here and get ready to put the rust bullet on so just trying to show you everything I'm doing along the way so let's do that next I'll get the cleaner and wipe it down okay I'm going to use some awesome and I'll use the bare metal last. I'll show you why. I'm just going to uh, wipe this off first. I love using rust bullet. Ever since my buddy told me about it years ago, I was really, really excited to try it. Because his frame on his truck is like brand new still. Stupid tab. And he kind of doesn't take very good care of his truck. I mean, he did by putting the rust bullet on it, but, you know, that's why if you notice the frame head and the underneath of the floor pan here, are already done. That's what I used on this. And being I really won't be running around in the winter with all the salt, hopefully, uh, you know, it'll last a long time. It'll probably outlast me, you know, because I'm not a young dude like some of you. Now, wherever there's bare metal, I'll show you what to use before the rust bullet because you want it to stick and not have problems. Okay, let me finish wiping this off. You're going to be bored with this part. I'll get this all cleaned up. We'll go over the procedure of the rust bullet and put it on. We have our rust bullet here. Uh, I got the can all crapped up. Uh, I love this stuff. Uh, you can see, here's a picture of what it looks like here, the can. Now remember, I try to go over this with everyone because not all of you have seen all the rust bullet films that I've done unless you went through my playlist. This is the door grade. So you clean them, you can go down to bare metal, you can go over rust, just get the loose stuff off. Always better using phosphoric acid too to seal it. 
Uh, I don't need to in this engine compartment because there's no rust in there. Uh, very minimal, you'll see. Uh, it does come in a kit. However, if you want to use this as a primer base, they sell the automotive grade rust bullet. Where actually it ends up being a primer. So check that out if you get time. So I actually warmed this up a little because my garage is cold. And I see this is going to fight me coming open because I'm a pig and didn't clean the can when I was closing it. Although I have another quart, so I think I am going to try on the next project, since I already got my paint scheme for this one, is buying the automotive grade rust bullet and uh, going ahead and using it as a primer, because I think that would be almost invincible then. So, uh, I didn't clean the can. Let me get a bigger screwdriver. This is what happens when you don't clean the rim of your can out. I mangled it, but the, ru the rust bullet's still good. <laughs> okay, let's get on it. In the kit comes Metal Blast, okay? And that's what you use to get the bare metal areas. Now, I don't have many to wipe down, but that's what you do. Since this is all new here, I'm going to go ahead and, uh, well, open the bottle. It cleans it really good so it adheres to it. Okay. <coughs> wow, stuff's strong. Wear a mask. Have my rust bullet ready. You might want to put a old bath towel. We don't want to bring that up. Something on the floor so you don't mess up your garage floor. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and start brushing this on. What I won't do on film is I got to get up under here, but I won't bore you with that part. So I'll go ahead and do that after I turn the camera off because it's pointless for you to watch me lay on my back and do stupidity. So let's start brushing this on. See how it goes on the new metal. Ooh, very nice. I'll bring you in closer. Give me one second. Nice and thick. I love this stuff. I can't wait to try the automotive grade where I can use it as a primer. That would be great. So let me bring you in a little closer here somehow. You can see how thick this is. Let me dab it in the part here. Then I'll brush it nice and smooth. It's nice and thick. It'll flow after a while, just like the frame head did. It was all smooth after it flowed out. This stuff is really nice. Like I said, this is the door grade level of it, so to speak. So you can't use this as primer. And that's okay because I wasn't painting where I'm using this. I guess with now, remember when you do two coats of this, if you feel the need to, <laughs> I think it, I, you got to look at the directions now, I forget, but I think it's after two hours, then you have to scuff it with like, you know, 1200 grit or something uh, to make it porous again. And then you can do your second coat. But if you let it tack up and you put a second coat on within an hour, you're okay. So I'm going to go across here, probably going to do two coats on this bare metal. I could tell the way it's covering, but let me readjust the camera. I was just getting you in close for a second. Okay. Now, as you remember, this was the new quarter panel extension and I did wipe it with the metal blast since it's new metal. So you definitely want to coat everything really well. Now, when you're getting down inside of tracking where seals are going to go, Make sure you sweep it out good. Don't leave globs in there because this stuff's thick and then you'll never get your seal in and then you'll be saying Slade's an idiot and you know, the whole thing. Or maybe you do anyhow, but either way. I'm not speeding some of this up. 
and there's a reason for it. I like aggravating you. No, I am trying to show how thick it goes on. And when I get to the other side over there, I'll go ahead and move the camera in real close so you can see the thickness of it. But I'll go ahead and do a major portion of it. When I got to get up inside, I won't film all of that because you're going to get really bored if you're not already, you know, five beers deep watching me. And then I'll show the finished product. But let's go to the other side and then I'm going to show you close up. Or, whoops, it's dripping on the floor. See, good thing I grabbed another bath towel. <laughs> so, I got you in a little closer here. And you see, look how thick. So you got to make sure you stir it good, too. I didn't stir on camera, but I think you know how to stir paint. So, no point in going over that. We can do a video on stirring paint, but I think it'll be about... 60 seconds long. Okay. Get in the crevices real good. Dab your brush in there and then smooth it. Now you're going to see what I'm talking about. You'll see the streaks in there with the discolorment behind it. That's when you know you need a second coat. Although they do recommend, let me get up in here a minute. They do recommend two coats. So try to do small sections to the point where in an hour you can come back or under two hours and coat it. So let me speed up a little bit here. Oh, it's a shame I can't <laughs> almost have you here that it is actually going on so thick and smooth and then it almost creates like an armor plate. It's, I just like his stuff. Okay, let me finish here and I'm not going to worry about filming uh, me going in some tight areas underneath because it's stupid. You don't want to watch that. Uh, so let me get this finished here. I'll run the camera around here. I'll close for the day and then I'm going to come back after I tell you some important stuff, of course, and then uh, we'll go on to the next chapter. All right, so I got the rust bullet on. I am going to do a second coat. I'm not going to film it because that would just be silly. But I will take a photo to slip in here in a second of what it looks like with two coats on it when it's done. But here's a tip for you, of course, when you are doing this, and you're hitting any fender bolt areas, make sure you put a bolt through there. You know, go ahead and do your paint and pull the bolt out. Or you can uh, run a tap through it just to clean the threads up. But see, that's one coat. You can almost see me in it. <laughs> Not to put you in shock or anything, but stuff's nice. So let me get my second coat on and I'll catch up with you in a second and we'll close out and tell you what's coming up. All right, so we went ahead and got two coats on. You can almost see me in it. Now, obviously, it's not supposed to be like base coat, clear coat, like, you know, a deep, deep shine. But there's two coats. And truthfully, this will be extremely protected. I went up inside there and then got underneath the car you know, and got underneath these shelves. I got inside the tracking because inside this tracking is where they rust. Okay, so you want to get inside there, but make sure you sweep it out real good. Don't leave globs of it in there or you're going to have a hard time getting the seal through. So that's all rust bulleted and protected as promised. I'm taking you through the whole journey, so let me go over a couple of things real quick and close out for the day. Okay, so that was this week's video. Uh, buy what you want, but I prefer the rust bullet because I know it works. Uh, I decided to do the engine compartment today for a couple of different reasons, and next week I'm going to go ahead and do the underneath the carriage and everything. I got to pull the brake lines and stuff off of there, I forgot, and we'll wire wheel clean all that up and rust bullet it. 
We have an interview coming up on a 1971 bus named Pickle. Uh, his name's Dino. He's coming up from Maryland, and we're going to do an interview with him, just like we did Justin with the Mexican Beetle. And we're going to do our roundtable meeting we were talking about in the club meeting chat. Don't, don't forget, Sunday nights at 9 p.m. Eastern, we do the club meeting chat. Sometimes Heather's in there with me. Sometimes it's just me. But uh, it's a lot of fun. It's become a club now. Uh, big family community, and I appreciate everybody sharing the channel and pulling more people in. This isn't just a DIY channel. This is a community at this point, and that is awesome. Uh, look forward to a lot of upcoming stuff. The roundtable meeting is going to be fun because there's going to be me, Justin, Dino, and Heather sitting around the big roundtable talking, having pizza, laughing, going over a lot of Volkswagen stuff, some stories, it's going to be a fun video. I don't think anybody's ever done that before. So, okay, thanks for being here. And I got to go ahead and get ready because winter's coming. I'm going to hook up that big heater in here. I was kidding earlier. I don't think anybody wants to watch me wire up a 220 heater. And Heather got her winter treads, of course. Because winter's here. When she buys them tires, I know it's time for winter. So... Everybody have a great weekend. I'll see you Sunday night at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Community Live Chat Club Meeting.